formally booked by authorities in Georgia over accusations that he conspired to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in that state. Mr Trump, who's running for president in the 2024 election, attended Fulton County Jail, where he was also fingerprinted before being released on bail. From Georgia, our US correspondent Mark Stone reports. Defiance, certainly. Defining, no question. The first ever mugshot of an American president, history made and a nation stunned. Released by the local sheriff's office at the end of a remarkable day. Just an hour earlier, Donald Trump had emerged from his branded jet at Atlanta's airport for the journey to prison and a booking for the most serious of charges. There is an irony that it was the local police who cleared roads for him to pass to make his way to Fulton County Jail for their own sheriff to arrest him. And so it was that the motorcade swept past bemused onlookers and into one of this country's most notorious prisons, where a former president becomes just a number. P01135809, the inmate number, on the charge sheet released while he was inside. Donald J. Trump of Palm Beach, Florida, White male, 6'3", 215 pounds, blonde or strawberry hair, blue eyes. And then the charges against him. They amount to an alleged attempt to subvert democracy, to steal an election. Along with the mugshot, his fingerprints were taken and a bond paid to secure his release. And with that, it was done. The motorcade rolling again back to the airport. Well, the fourth time this has happened in just a few months. It feels almost now to be routine, but do not underestimate the consequences. God bless America. Everybody! Land that I love. He wouldn't have seen his supporters, a hundred or so true loyalists, camped on the other side of the jail among the media throng. He's been accused, he's suffered, he's been persecuted, now prosecuted, but he's been persecuted for seven years with everything they can think of. And if it wasn't for him, they'd be after us. Are you worried about how all this plays out? No, because I know in the end, he will be vindicated, you know. Um, he, he's a president of the people. And he is going to save this country, and he'll save the world too, because where we go one, we go all. Every time Donald Trump is indicted, his support goes up. Trump won and you know it. His base is deep, but how high is his ceiling? Among the crowd, two rats, Republicans against Trump. I'm motivated because I want change. And, and it's time for people to take accountability for their actions. It's, it's time. It's about time for Trump to... Back at the airport, a statement and a defiance to match the mugshot that is already on T-shirts. What has taken place here is a travesty of justice. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. And everybody knows it. I've never had such support. Followed now by their master are the lawyers, White House staff and local election officials, all accused alongside him. This indictment stands apart from the others precisely because of its breadth. This is now a familiar story. Frequency tends to normalise. This, though, is anything but normal. Mark Stone, Sky News in Atlanta. Well, I'm joined by NBC correspondent Drew Petromo, who's in Washington. Drew, good to speak to you uh, Well, this afternoon for us, this morning uh, for you. It feels almost familiar. We're getting used to indictments of uh, Donald Trump. But the mugshot, amongst other things, makes this one different, doesn't it? Yes, and I, you, know, you mentioned that this was the first, even though there were several other arrests, the first time that the former president did have his mugshot taken. And uh, there's a certain element to that as it's kind of spread across social media. There's, a, a, I think, a bit of a shock wave that went across the country of, of seeing that mugshot. But, you know, there's another part that it has become routine to, to hear about these arrests and these charges against the former president. And there's a lot of uh, it is viewed uh, a part, uh, across large parts of the country through partisan lenses, and that has become built into this as well, where people put on their red and their blue shirts and kind of view these arrests and these charges through those, those lenses. Drew, thank you very much. Drew Petromo there in Washington. And uh, later I will be joined by May Mailman, 
a former legal advisor for Donald Trump and vice president at Restoring Integrity and Trust in Elections. Uh, that is at 3.30 here on Sky News, so stay with us for that. Well, meanwhile, the Kremlin has rejected allegations that it was involved in a plane crash which is believed to have killed the Russian mercenary leader Yevgeny Prigozhin. The Ministry of Defence says his death would almost certainly have a destabilising effect on the Wagner Group, which he led. The military leader attempted a mutinous march in Moscow uh, on Moscow in June. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak here is saying the UK government is currently monitoring the situation uh, in Russia. Our intelligence suggests that Prigozhin was most likely on the plane. We're obviously monitoring the situation very closely, working with our allies to establish uh, what happened. But the most important thing here is for Putin to end his illegal invasion of Ukraine, which is causing untold suffering to people. And we will continue to stand with Ukraine, support them so that they can resist that aggression from Russia.